Mr. District Attorney, starring David Bryan. Mr. District Attorney, champion of the people, defender of truth, guardian of our fundamental rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And it shall be my duty as district attorney not only to prosecute to the limit of the law all persons accused of crimes perpetrated within this county, but to defend with equal vigor the rights and privileges of all its citizens. This is David Bryan. In a moment, we'll bring you another case from the files of Mr. District Attorney. But first, a word from our sponsor. And now, here is our star, David Bryan, as Paul Garrett, Mr. District Attorney. One of the real headaches of my job is the crime committed amid the activity of some unusual event. Here, the lawbreaker uses the stir and bustle of a crowd to cover his act, and often leaves only a confused trail to follow. This was the situation we faced in the case you are about to hear. This ain't very close. What do you want me to do, drive in the front door? We can get out of this spot in a hurry. You sure that motorcycle gang is going to get here? Any second. Sally gave me the pitch on it, and that kid's on the ball. Here, get this jacket on. Yeah. Here they come now. Let's go. They couldn't have timed it better. That girl is great. What do you want, guy? Clayton? Here he comes. Stand right there, mister. This is a holdup. He's ducking out. That's what he thinks. You killed him, please. So what? Let's get at the jewelry. Come on. Brother, look at all them diamond rings. Never mind looking at them. Scoop them up and let's get out of here. Yeah. Who have you got here, Harrington? Chief, this is Boston. Sells newspapers on the corner. Boston, this is Mr. Garrett, the district attorney. And you're trying to find out about them hold-up men, ain't you? Well, I can tell you, because I saw them come in here, two of them. They parked one of them little sport cars right near my stand. I saw them leave, too. But I didn't know they'd robbed the place and shot poor Mr. Sloat. If I had, I'd have stopped them. What made you notice these men, Boston? Oh, I noticed everything. I spotted this little car right away here. Quicker than a sparrow in a puddle. The man who runs the health food store up the street says the men were dressed like motorcycle riders. That's right, they was. Leather jackets and them hats. But they was driving that little car. Believe me, mister, I seen them and I knew. I believe you, Boston. Didn't happen to notice the license of the car, did you? Oh, no, sir, I slipped up on that one. But that was because all them motorcycles come busting into town, a-roaring and a-blasting. They was enough to make a man forget his own name. Well, it's pretty obvious, Harrington. They used the arrival of the motorcycle club as a cover. Yeah, they must have known right when the club was going to get here, then. Yes, and as soon as we get back to the city, you'd better check on that, Harrington. Find out where the club meets, who the head of it is. I guess they moved Mr. Sloat's body, didn't they? Oh, yes, about a half hour ago. Uh, you fellas leaving now? Yes, we're leaving. Oh, and I want to thank you for your help. It might be very important to us. Well, good. Hey, how about you fellas buying a paper from me? You can read all about the shooting. Why not? Might be a good investment. Here, here. It, it's this way. Where are you going, babe? I'm going in the house. What do you think? In the car. I want to show you something. What? Kid, you really did a job for us. Those motorcycles come over the hill and into that town just like you said and when you said. Well, I guess I ought to know. I belong to the club, don't I? Were you riding? Well, sure, with a boyfriend. 
I looked for you guys, but I couldn't see you anywhere. We were busy, babe. Real busy. Yeah. Take a look at that. <gasps> oh. Clean. It's beautiful. Yeah. Let me put it around your neck. Huh? Oh, you... <laughs> you mean you're giving it to me? <laughs> sure, I'm giving it to you. You're going to get a lot more. <laughs> oh, Clayton. It... Oh, let me look in the mirror. <laughs> yeah, that looks swell, don't it, babe? And you are built for that kind of stuff. Oh, I never had anything like this in my life. Well, you have now. Uh-oh. What's the matter? It's Dan. The boyfriend? What do you care? Sally. Hello, Dan. What are you doing here? We're talking to a friend of mine. Dan, I want you to meet Cleet. Cleet, this is Dan Clark. How are you, Clark? Hi. Dan is president of the cycle club, Cleet. Yeah, yeah, I know. You uh, work with your motor, Clark? He delivers for a multigraph company. What does he care? Well, what are you doing sitting out here with this guy anyway? Oh, what's wrong with me sitting out here with him? He's a friend of mine. So he's a friend of yours. Does that mean you have to sit cooped up with him in this hopped-up baby buggy? Now, listen, chum. Don't talk like that about the car. This job will wax that sucker of yours any day. You got 115 under this hood? Like fat, you have. That's what you need to stay even with me. I'll stay with you, and I'll leave you. Anytime, anywhere. Put your money where your mouth is. Oh, listen, delivery boy. I'll put my fist where your mouth is if you keep yapping like that. You talk big. Let's see you step out here and back it up. Well, you think I won't? Cut it out, Cleet. I don't want any trouble here. Not in front of my apartment. Dan, I'll never speak to you again if you don't stop this. Oh, look, Sally. I mean it, Dan. You can't behave like this to my friends. Okay, Sally, have it your own way. <laughs> He's walking out on you. Don't worry, he'll come back. Aaron, come back yet, Miss Miller? Yes, he's been using your phone, Mr. Garrett, and he got the information on that motorcycle club. Oh, good. Hello, Harrington. I hear you got some information on that motorcycle club. Yeah, and I just got a rundown on the president of it, too. A kid named Dan Clark works for the city multigraph company, and he'll be in their office around 3.30. Mm, it's almost 3 now. now. Let's go and have a talk with him. Will you be back? Probably not. We'll see you in the morning, Miss Miller. Bye. Yes, sir. Can I help you? We're looking for Dan Clark. I'm Dan Clark. Well, this is Mr. Garrett, the district attorney. District attorney? I'd like to ask you a few questions, Clark. I understand you're the president of a motorcycle club. That's right. The same club that made a trip to Colton City last Saturday? Yeah. What's this all about? Well, uh, a jewelry store was held up in Colton City on Saturday afternoon. Owner of the store was killed. Made the headlines in yesterday's paper. Maybe I shouldn't admit it, but I just read the comics in the sport page and let it go at that. Well, this holdup occurred while your club was riding through town. It was pulled by a couple of fellas wearing motorcycle rider outfits. Oh, now, wait a second. I'm certain none of our gang had anything to do with a holdup. Well, we're not saying they did. But how can you be so positive? Well, I know that bunch, every one of them. Well, we're not accusing your club of anything, Clark. We're just trying to get at the facts of this case. All our guys work, Mr. Garrett. They just aren't the kind of guys who do anything like that. Uh, do you have anyone in the club who drives cars on these joints? Cars? Mister, when you're a cycle man, you raid cars behind bicycles. How many members in your club, Clark? Sixty-seven, counting the girls. They're not regular members, but you know how it is with women. Well, we're willing to go along with the idea that your club is in the clear on this. But whoever held up that store expected to use the noise of your motors as a cover. They knew just about to the minute when your gang would arrive there. Which means somebody had to tell them. It sure looks that way, doesn't it? It makes me feel bad. Well, there's no need to blame yourself, but we'd like your cooperation. I'll do anything you say. We're looking for two men who drove a sports car. Sports car? Does that ring a bell? Well, uh, I don't know. There's one guy... I'm not sure, though. Yeah, you can leave that part of it to us. I don't even know his full name. Well, could you get it? And where we might find him? I can try. After all, I don't want the club to get to blame for this. Well, why don't you check on it, Clark? And call me at my office. All right, sir, I will. Good. Good. 
We'll talk to you later, then. It's you. Hello, Sally. I thought maybe you were never coming back. You know better than that, Sally. I do. Well, if you don't, you should. You know how I feel about you. You certainly don't always show it. Getting nasty about nothing, insulting my friends. I see you with another guy, I get jealous, that's all. I'm sorry. It shows you don't trust me. I'm sorry. I promise it won't happen again. I'm glad to hear it. I want to talk to you about something. Aren't you going to ask me in? Okay. Come in. Hiya, Clark. I didn't know he was here. Sit down, Dan. Seems as though this guy's taken up a lot of your time. Watch it, Dan. Remember what you just promised me. Why don't you relax, Clark? We've just been saying a lot of nice things about you. Like what? Well, like it takes a pretty smart guy to be president of a club like yours. What am I supposed to do, take a bow? I'll see you later, Sal. Now, wait a second, Dan. You're not going to go off on another huff, are you? I got you? things to do. All right, if you feel you have to go. I'll see you Saturday on the ride. There isn't going to be any ride. What do you mean? There was a holdup in Colton City last Saturday, same time the club was riding through the town. The police think the crooks used us as a cover for the job. And there was a man killed. So what? Uh, you guys didn't have anything to do with it, did you? No. But I wouldn't like the same thing to happen again. So we're going to cut out the rides for a while. See you around, Sally. Uh, wait a second, Clark. What for? I don't think you ought to call off that ride. Who cares what you think? Well, it's like I said before, Clark. Why don't you relax? I'm the kind of guy who could do you a lot of good. Wait a minute, Cleet. I... I wouldn't go too far if I were you. I know what I'm doing, babe. Clark's no dummy. He's not going to turn down a real good thing. Are you, Clark? I don't know what you're talking about. Well, it's simple. If you let the club keep taking those rides every weekend, it could do me a lot of good. And I'm a guy that likes to return a favor, which means I could do you a lot of good. Which also means you're one of the guys who held up that jewelry store in Colton City. Not a bad operation, was it? A touch of genius, if anyone was to ask you. Somebody did ask me. Yeah? Who? The district attorney. I couldn't tell him very much then, but I can now. Attorney's office. Hello, Miss Miller. Put me through the chief, will you? Yeah, he's right here. Hang on. It's Harrington, Chief. Hmm. Where are you, Harrington? Ninth Precinct Station. And you're not going to get any report from young Clark, Chief. No? Why not? He's just been shot dead in front of an apartment house on Harris Avenue. This is David Bryan. Before we continue with Mr. District Attorney in the case of the motorcycle club killer, here is an important message from our sponsor. And now back to David Bryan, starring as Paul Garrett, Mr. District Attorney. A jewelry store had been held up in a small town just outside the city. The owner of the place had been murdered. A motorcycle club entering the town had innocently provided the noise and confusion used by the gunman as a cover for the crime. We had questioned Dan Clark, president of the club, and he had promised us the name of a probable suspect. A phone call from Harrington gave me some bad news. Young Clark had been shot to death. Report just came in that the ambulance is on its way, Chief. I thought you might like to meet me there. Well, whereabouts on Harris Avenue, Harrington? Between Lamar and 10th Street. I'll leave right away. Well, question any bystanders and the people who live there. There must be a tie-up with the neighborhood some way. Okay, Chief. I'll be waiting for you. Better cancel those two appointments I have for this afternoon, Miss Miller. Looks like I'm going to be tied up for the rest of the day. All right, Mr. Garrett. I'll make the calls right away. Hi, Chief. 
Clark was still alive, so they took him in before I got here. But Lieutenant Padway just got a call from receiving. The kid was dead on arrival. Anyone know what he was doing here? Girlfriend lives in one of the apartments. Well, let's go in and talk to her. Did she see it happen? Yeah, claims she didn't see a thing and doesn't know who did it or why. This is it. Not another cop. This is Mr. Garrett, Miss Brady. He's the district attorney. I've already answered a thousand questions. What do I have to do now? I'm sure you won't mind answering a few more. The boy who was killed was a friend of yours, wasn't he? Sure, he was my friend. But can I help it if he got killed? Were you engaged to him, Miss Brady? Well, I guess you could say I was, yes. Do you have other men friends? Well, you know how it is. The girl's nice looking and the guys come around. I wouldn't want to push any of them in the face. No, I'm sure you wouldn't. Well, did Dan Clark know any of your other friends? No, he didn't. Well, Dan was kind of jealous. I, I never let him know who else I was running around with. Are you sure he didn't know anyway? I'm sure he didn't. Well, do you live here alone, Miss Brady? With my sister and her husband. They both work. Do you work? Well, right now I'm in between jobs. And that's a very attractive necklace you're wearing. Oh, thanks. I'm glad you like it. Present from one of your friends? Well, yes, Dan gave it to me. Thank you, Miss Brady. We won't trouble you any further. Oh, and thanks for your cooperation. Don't mention it. Something wrong about that girl, Chief. Yes, and I think she's wearing it around her neck. Could you describe that necklace, Harrington? Sure. Where's your car? At the precinct house. I rode over with the squad car. Well, get in. I'll take you over there. Then I'd like you to drive over to Colton City. Find out if that necklace is part of the look. Right. Hi, Cleet. Been waiting long? About a half hour. I wanted to be sure I wasn't following. Smart girl. How's everything? Everything's wonderful. I had them eating out of my hand. Even the district attorney. You should have been there. I'd have died laughing. Oh, incidentally, you didn't give me that necklace. Dan gave it to me. Kid, you sound better to me all the time. <laughs> what about Saturday? I talked to some of the boys at the club. I convinced them that they should make the ride in memory of Dan. In mem... Oh, quit it, will you, babe? You're killing me. What town? Cliffdale. Perfect. I already know the place will knock over. I want to go with you, Cleve. That's out, babe. If you want to see that town, you ride a motorcycle like the rest of them. You think I can? I think you could do anything. What's it going to be this time? More jewelry? Dough. Lots of dough. You'll find out. Go on home, kid. I'll see you later. <laughs> Hi, Chief. Morning, Miss Miller. Morning, Harrington. Hello, Harrington. Any luck last night? No, nothing. Seems that the store has always been a one-man operation. And with the owner dead, no one can positively identify any of the stolen pieces. That's too bad. But we just got a report from ballistics that adds up to something. The bullets that killed young Clark came from the same gun that killed the store owner. Hey, that is something. Can you ride a motorcycle, Harrington? Well, I used to be able to. I guess I can still wobble along on one of the things. Yeah, it seems that motorcycle club is going to take another outing tomorrow afternoon. I'd like you to ride with them. I'd be delighted, Chief. But I haven't got a thing to wear. Oh, Harrington. Well, we'll take care of that for you. I want you to stick near the girl if she goes along. You'll have a two-way radio on the machine so you can contact me in my car. Oh, and maybe I'd better make the arrangement of that right now. Captain Warren of traffic, Miss Miller. You got his number? Let's see. Yes, it's right here. Get him on for me, will you? Okay. Be 
get a break. Parking space right near the joint. Yeah. Hey, there's two loan companies in this block. We're taking the one with the big sign. Get out. Have we got to wait for the motorcycles? I want to case the place. Come on. Yeah. KNK4 to car 6X2. KNK4 to car 6X2. Car 6X2. I'm getting it, Harrington. Go ahead. We'll be in Cliffdale in about five minutes, Chief. I'm on the main street at the far end of town. How about the girl? She's riding with another guy right in front of me. She didn't recognize me with this headgear and goggles on. She just... Hey. Hey, I lost him. They must have speeded up to the front. Try to pick her up again, Harrington. Keep in touch. Okay, Chief. KNK4 signing off. Can I help you? We like to talk to somebody about a loan. Will you wait just a moment? The interviewers are all busy just now. Sure, we wait. Look at that open safe. I've been looking. There's the motorcycle club. Right on time. All right, folks, this is a holdup. Don't anybody move. What? And I don't want to hear any more of that or we'll really start blasting you. Get the money out of that safe. All right, all right. Please don't point that gun at me. Get the money on the counter. I will, I will. Now the other one. Yank them phones loose. Good idea. Get the dough. Yeah. All right. Down on your faces. Everybody. And stay there. Anybody tries to follow us gets a bullet right square in a puss. Come on, let's go. Let's work, boy. Come on, jump in. Come on. Three of us in here is going to be a tight fit. Jam yourself in. What are you doing here, babe? I saw the car and here I am. Well, come on, get going. Turn up the alley. KNK4 to car 6X2. KNK4 to car 6X2. Car 6X2. Go ahead, Harrington. I just spotted the girl. She's with two men in a light blue sports roadster. They went down an alley and turned parallel to the next street. I'm following them. Well, which way are they heading? North. And they're moving toward me. I'll see if I can get some help in setting up a roadblock. Stay with them, Harrington. I'm going to switch over to the local police. Car 662. Car 662. Car 662. Anybody behind us? Way back. Some guy on a motorcycle. Don't worry about that. This rocket could lose any motorcycle or any cop's car. She's a honey. Look, we're doing 90, and I only have it halfway to the floor. I ought to punch you right in that cute-looking nose of yours. What's the matter? Don't you like my driving? I told you not to try to butt in on this. You might as well get used to me, Cleet. I like excitement. Well, it looks like you're going to get some. There's a roadblock up ahead. Turn into that field, that dirt road. That barn. Stop in front of that barn. Yeah. Get the door, Bostick. Uh, Up in the hayloft. Quick. Come on. Come on, come on. All right, all right. Here, grab my hand. There. Oh. What do we do, please? Start blasting as soon as they stick their heads in that door. We can hold out in this place for a week. They're going to take us, you hear? Give me one of your guns, please. Here they come. Get them. The hayloft, Pete. Give it back to them. All right. All right, I quit, I quit. Throw your guns down, then. There you are. That's all of them. All right. Now come down here. The three of you. Okay. We're, we're coming. What a pair of slobs you turned out to be. Big, tough men. Shut up. Big, tough men till the shooting starts. Then you quit cold. That's the usual pattern with men like these, Miss Brady. Rough and tough as long as they have the edge. Well, we're going to change all that. We're going to take them out of circulation for a long, long time. And I think we can put you away somewhere, too. Come on, let's go. This is David Bryan. I hope you enjoy this case from the files of Mr. District Attorney. I'll be back in just a moment after this message from our sponsor. Now, 
here is the star of Mr. District Attorney, David Bryan, with a word about the program you have just heard. This was another case that made big headlines. The two men we call Cleet and Bostick were tried and convicted on charges of armed robbery and first-degree murder. Sally is now serving time as an accessory before and after the facts. Now, this is David Bryan inviting you to join us when we present our next case based on the facts of crime from the file of Mr. District Attorney. Mr. District Attorney was originated by Phillips H. Lord. (laughs) 